This grand old cottage stands as a testament to a time when formality was in fashion. They brought yep. trunks of clothes and more formal attire. And a hired staff the norm. So do these current owners ever want to turn back time? I would love to go back in time. Just try it for a couple of days. I don't think I could stay there. <laughs> Not for too long. We could certainly go back to having all the helpers. Yeah, that's it. If this was how luxury living looked in 1887, this is how it looks today. We bought the first property 18 years ago, and we've built each of the children their own cottage. This is summer living with a few more perks than they had in the olden days. Behind you, we've got five beer kegs. Of course, you've got to have two flat screens. Up at the top here, we have a hot tub. I'm Elizabeth. I'm Deb. And this is our retreat. This cottage is what luxury summer living used to look like. At 127 years old, this charming and stately summer home is truly a grand old dame of Canadian cottage country. It stands as a testament to the good life as it once was, well before satellite TV, powerboats, or even electricity. The style is traditional to the area, with a wraparound veranda, large windows, and doors to let the breezes through, and painted hunter green with a red roof, all original to the cottage. It's known as Longuissa. Deb Cooper and her aunt Elizabeth Bell are the current stewards of this grand family legacy. It was built by my great-grandfather, Archibald Hamilton Campbell, in 1887, as a summer house for his large family, as an offshoot of the mill that was built across the river, which was a business proposition. The name Longwissa means Long Bay in Ojibwe, and because if you look at a map carefully, it is a very long bay. It's, it's very literal kind of naming. Back in the day, her great-grandfather owned all the land surrounding the cottage as far as the eye can see. So this home was quite isolated and off the grid, nothing like it is today. When you think of how everything was done back then, how long it took to just get a simple meal on the table, um, to get people up here, uh, the guests that would come up here en masse um, and stay, there were no weekendings. Uh, you, it, it took and a long time to formal, get up here. They brought yeah. trunks of clothes and more formal attire. Both Elizabeth and Deb have been coming to this cottage for as long as they can remember. Well, it's been in the family for 127 years. I've been up here for 75 summers. I'm the fifth generation. And, and I'm the fourth. <laughs> <laughs> when you walk into the cottage, uh, it looks exactly like 1887. The furniture has not changed. It looks almost identical to uh, when I was very small. And the, the children's rocking chairs are still there. Yeah. Change is always interesting. That's for sure. There's not much around here. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the main house of Longuissa. And it's an open concept with the dining room, the large dining, formal dining room right here. Uh, the feature is that there is a lovely skylight uh, which lets in light. This is my great-grandfather, Archibald Hamilton Campbell, who built the mill across the river and who subsequently built this cottage for his family. This picture was taken approximately in the 1890s, but it's one of the best pictures we have of the person who was responsible for beginning this. Perhaps the most unusual decor elements are the signs, such as this one, hand-carved by one of the previous occupants. There are 16 such signs in the cottage, each one quirky and playful. This is a puzzle that is a play on words, and if you say it quickly, it says, Pa del your own canoe. And that means, paddle your own canoe, which means, mind your own business, which my grandmother suggested that we do quite often. The tools used by Elizabeth's great aunt to carve these signs are memorialized in this display case, almost museum-like. 
as are these oil lamps, kept on display as a window to the past. These uh, oil lamps are a reminder of the old days before they brought the hydro in in the 30s. It is like a museum and we try and take care of the uh, various artifacts. You just can do what you can do. The cottage artifacts also include leather-bound guest books containing the names of every single person who has stayed at Longwissa since the day it was built. And anyone who stays here overnight has signs the guest book. And you can trace back if someone says, oh, when were those people here? Well, you just, someone will say, look in the guest book, because you've got it all written down. Deb and Elizabeth still maintain the tradition to this day. I sign the guest book every time I come. And if you go away, and the, often today, it's a, the children go on sleepovers. And if they go away for a night and come back, then they have to sign it again. In the height of its grandeur, the cottage had four full-time staff to do all the cooking, cleaning, and caring for the guests. And meals were a formal occasion. Right up until 1940, they would have formal dinners here. And when they were ready to have the dinner served, they would uh, come over here to this hatch and to get the food. And when they opened the hatch, Would you like oh, some tea oh my goodness, thank you so much. You're welcome. That's wonderful, thank you. <laughs> the food would come through and then it would be served. The times may have changed, but this cottage has remained relatively untouched, with the exception of the kitchen. It was built in 1965 and by my grandmother. Everybody chuckles because it is the newest part of this cottage. The kitchen is new. <laughs> As a young child, I remember this, the old kitchen. Uh, it had a six burner uh, wood burning stove over there and the staff would get it going at about six o'clock in the morning uh, and that would keep it going all day for all the meals to be prepared on. So imagine when it was uh, 80 degrees out or 30 degrees uh, Celsius, and it is just amazing to think that they were working over this stove every meal. Do they ever wish they could be transported back in time to see what it was like? I would love to go back in time. Just try it for a couple of days. I don't think I could stay there. <laughs> Not for too long. We could certainly go back to having all the helpers. Yeah, that's it. There we go. That's what we want. <laughs> In its heyday, the Longuissa compound had 27 beds. Today, it's down to 11. The second floor of the main house has four bedrooms, some still with the original hospital-style single beds. Every bed in the house back then was a single bed, and that's just the way it was. And people were placed by my grandmother of where they would sleep. But so far as we could determine, the couples were never together in the summer. We're lucky we had any generations after. <laughs> <laughs> back. As the oldest living family member, Elizabeth is the current matriarch of Longuissa tasked with keeping it going for generations to come. It's a very mixed blessing. We realize that the legacy is the people. On the other hand, it, it, you know, it, it's a commitment and it's a lot of work mm -hmm. and it's a labor of love. And you want to keep it going for the next generations and uh, it's important and it's our tour, our time to look after this cottage. I am very proud to be overseeing this legacy. I certainly do hope that Longwissa will be enjoyed by many generations to come. Meanwhile, this couple has built the ultimate cottage compound for their family's enjoyment. It's kind of feel the dreams, build it and they will come. With no shortage of perks and toys to go around. I'm Mike. I'm Kara. And I'm Christy. And this is our retreat. If you've ever dreamed about a cottage property with plenty of room for generations of your family and guests, check out this stunning private compound known as Cabrisi Pines. This impressive retreat occupies a long stretch of prime lakefront property in the Muskoka region of Ontario, Canada. It boasts five cottages, two boathouses, and 6,000 square feet of dock space. Plenty of room for everyone. Mike and Karen Buckets began with one family cottage, then eventually built each of their three children, Carly, 
Brett and Christy a cottage of their own. But like any big project, this didn't materialize overnight. Rome, after all, wasn't built in a day. It's kind of field of dreams, build it and they will come. Uh, when we, we bought the first property 18 years ago, and then we bought four more adjacent properties over the next eight years, and we've built each of the children their own cottage. Karen and I live in the boathouse in the summers, and we have a guest house behind the boathouse. We just decided it was a good idea to let everybody have their separate spaces. So. I And for me, it's all about family. It's definitely the draw for the family to get together. And the focus on family is what led to the name of the compound. The property is called Cabrisi Pines, which we decided was appropriate because it was simply the three siblings' names uh, put together. Carly, Brett, and Christy, Cabrisi Pines. Building Cabrisi Pines has definitely been a family effort. Christy spearheaded the interior design of her cottage, and then eventually her parents as well. And her brother Brett came up with the conceptual design for the boathouse while apprenticing as an architect. It's pretty cool that the kids were so involved in it, and that makes me very proud. One of the things that we're, I guess, very proud of is each of the buildings is very unique to the personality living there. Brett's place is the ultimate man cave. Heavy wood, heavy furniture. Carly's. Uh, is old school, very, very traditional. Christie's was an interesting design because she came with pictures of old English stone walls and baseboards, uh, gothic almost to a degree. Christie, an interior designer, is the couple's oldest daughter. Of the three siblings, Christie spends the most time up here. I feel very connected to this place because I got married here, our family will grow up here. And I also feel connected to the place because I, I designed my cottage and it has basically been the basis uh, start to my career. Christie's Cottage sits on the site of the original property purchased nearly two decades ago. A lot has changed since then. Okay, and this is my cottage. So we are in the center room right now. As you can see, the kitchen's right here, the, the main living room is right here, and the dining room's right here. This cottage was completely rebuilt from the ground up, and the, the beams actually were reused and restained for, for the construction of this place. And um, I was part of the process from, from the conceptual phase right through to the decorating phase, which happened to be before I actually got into the career of interior design. So I suppose you could say that this is what really fueled and solidified my passion for, for that avenue of, of work. The dining room is one of my favorites, I suppose. I mean, I have a, a love for these lights in particular. I like things that make big statements. And this is our master bedroom. This archway was part of an image that first fueled the concept for this entire place. So this doorway has, has a special foundation to this entire building. And how can you beat this view? You wake up and you see the lake and you see sunshine and trees and the sun glistening off the water, it's, it's spectacular. But when it came to the design of Mike and Karen's striking boathouse, they ended up going in a totally different direction thanks to input from their kids. This building is nothing like we originally designed it to be. We ended up with something totally, totally different. Mike and Karen Vuckets spent nearly two decades building this stunning family compound, aptly named after their three children. Carly, Brett, and Christy, Cabrisi Pines. Of the five buildings on the property, theirs is the most striking. Welcome to the top floor of our boathouse.
This is our main living space, and as you can see, it's very different from all of the other spaces and living areas on the property. Christie's picked everything out. My only condition was, I want a couch that I can lay down, be comfortable, not fall off of, and watch sports Sunday afternoon. <laughs> As you can see, the space is totally open, bedroom, living room, washroom and closets are tucked behind. Uh, I have a real affinity for water and the sound of water. It's, I find it extremely soothing. I wanted to have an indoor water feature in addition to the big waterfall between the first and the second floor. So Christy found and designed these and we had them built. It was interesting, the first night we slept here, Karen and I are looking at each other and going, I don't think we're gonna be able to fall asleep with the noise. That was probably the last thing we remember because we were out instantly. It is so soothing and it's instantly you're asleep. The actual inside living space is only 650 square feet, but with the high ceilings and walls of glass, it seems much larger. With all the boat traffic coming by to take a look at the waterfalls and the unique design of this building, we have to be careful about what we're wearing or... Uh... If the blinds are up or down. The blinds are up or down. I don't like looking at myself in the mirror naked, let alone uh, leaving the blinds up. <laughs> it's an interesting place to live in the summer, being on top of the water. You wake up in the morning, you open the blinds, you hear the waves laughing, the sun shining, reflecting off the properties across the bay. It is a really funky place to wake up. So this is where Karen and I spend most of our evenings. We've got the great loungers, we've got the big screen TV. We have these blinds, subject to uh, the mosquitoes and the black flies that come down on all three sides, that keep them everything out so we can be in here waving at the mosquitoes and enjoy the outdoors without having to worry about getting bit. Because of all the black granite, it gets quite hot. So we have these misters built into the eaves that send down, if you've been to Vegas, you understand outdoor air conditioning. That's what we have here. We've got all of this greenery and color. Uh, surprisingly, the color of that green matches all of the color of the furniture downstairs. <laughs> Solely Brett and Christy. And it looks really, really spectacular from the water. Welcome to the lower party zone of our boathouse. We do all of our cooking out here. Uh, last year we invested in a pizza oven that I thought was going to be a total waste of cash. That thing is going at least twice a day. So welcome to Party Central. This is the main floor of the boathouse. Behind you we've got five beer kegs, a uh, big open space with bar stools and sitting area. We live down here during the day. Of course you've got to have two flat screens. You've got two games going on, you've got a golf tournament on. We're trying to figure out how to get two more put in, but I'm getting a little resistance uh, on the home front on the, on the third and the fourth flat screen. Plus, we don't know where to put them. <laughs> Three years ago, we were on the hunt for the perfect coffee on the lake, couldn't find it. So we bought our own barista machine. So clearly, this is the best place to come get a coffee on the lake, bar none. And this is our outdoor living space where the ladies like to lounge. So we have lots of seating out in the sun. And this is the waterfall coming from the pond up on the second story. Runs down, we light it up at night. This is the feature that I think attracts an awful lot of uh, the boat traffic to come and see. And there's plenty more to see that the boaters cannot. This luxury cottage property not only boasts five separate cottages for family members and friends, it has plenty of amenities as well. Everything on the compound is connected with gravel roads and beautiful stone walkways with stunning landscaping throughout. Back there is my brother's cottage. Um, over to this side is my sister's cottage. And over in the center of the property is my cottage. And then at the far end, uh, we have a guest property at the back of my parents boathouse okay so this is my sister Carly's cottage and she lives down in Los Angeles and she's only here about twice a year so a lot of other family members use her, her this place often throughout the summer and what I personally love about this place is that it is a bit more of a, a nod to the old cabin feel that we grew up in it is closest to the party dock which I will take you down to now 
So this is the party dock. As you can see, a, a party's already starting here. And over here is where Jackson likes to, to build some sand castles and have all sorts of fun in the sand. And then back in the, over in this corner here, we have the bar area. And then as you can see, we have some brightly colored toys behind me. And then there is a screened in lounge over there in case the bugs get a little bad. Okay, so here we are approaching another gathering zone. Up at the top here we have a hot tub and, and then quite a large fire pit. So this is a, a very popular space to kind of hang with, with the family and friends. And then over here, over here is my favorite spot. This is what I like to call my zen zone. So many, many hours over the years have been spent with the dogs, with my son, having some wine, reading some books, magazines, whether it's raining, whether it's sunshine, it's lovely. Well, I love it here because um, of so many reasons. I, I can have um, some alone time, I can have family time, I can have romantic time with my husband, um, I can have laughter and, and create amazing memories with the whole family. There are endless reasons, really. The best thing for us about the cottage legacy is everybody's been involved in all aspects, in the construction, the design, the use. Cabrisi Pines yeah, is the facility to keep our family together, the third generation and the in-laws, so their experiences, our kids' experiences, what will ultimately be our grandkids' experiences, uh, will, they will identify. Cabrisi Pines with the family. Mike always gets emotional when it comes to family.